Boy, am I excited today, because um, we're talking about hydrogen. So I get to do a breakthrough today, and um, you can probably guess who I'm going to be talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a little bit, uh, okay, I'm really nervous on this one, um, but it's really cool. This breakthrough is, in fact, I might even say this could be my greatest breakthrough presentation, or my last. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to talk about the world's first hydrogen car, and this is the scientist and inventor we will be discussing today. Um, we're going to talk about Dr. Billings and the first hydrogen engine. So we got to jump back to this now. Some of you are like, yeah, yeah, I've been at Science Labs, I know the story. Well, be patient, okay? There might be some little gems, but let's start at really that magical moment in the classroom where Dr. Billings saw his teacher. Remember, he had this teacher and he, he split the water, kind of what Dr. John was talking about, where he split the oxygen and the hydrogen from the water, electrolysis, and he took the hydrogen and he put it in a balloon. And of course, hydrogen's lighter than air, so when the balloon got hydrogen in it, it wanted to float, he tied a string to it, let the balloon float up, he dipped the string in alcohol, lit it, and the flame went up the string, and then boom, big explosion. Got the kid's attention, I'll bet. And then he went to the board, and he wrote, hydrogen plus oxygen equals energy. And then, the big moment, and it produces water. So wait, so wait, there's this energy, this boom of energy, and the exhaust of that was just water? And that moment, was mind-blowing for Dr. Billings. This is, this is fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> so, th so one of the things that happened to have been happening in Dr. Billings' life at the time, here's a photo of kind of roughly that time. You know, we're in school, and one of the things he had been doing was reading a book, actually, about engines and about how these automobile engines work and something clicked in his brain. And he realized, wait a minute, we have these cars, we're running on engines that burn gasoline and the exhaust is all this pollution. What if we ran them on hydrogen and that boom inside the car just put water vapor out? This could change the world. And he got so excited about it, he went home and he drew this diagram of his plan of how we could make cars run on hydrogen. When he showed it to his teacher, his teacher was like, wow, that's really cool. And this started his excitement. So of course, what are you gonna do? And we could, we could, this is a really good lesson actually on not giving up because as you have an idea, you know, you're kind of at that top point of the excitement, but then you start finding out the realities. And um, it's important when you have something you wanna do, you don't give up, okay? Take Beethoven, for example. Tons of people told him, you're never gonna be a musician, you're never gonna write music because he was deaf. And did he listen to them? No, he did not. Okay. <clears throat> but, okay, coming back. So he thought, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to convert a car. I'm going to run a car in hydrogen. Now, you have to remember, you know, he had been reading this book. Now, how do these car engines work? You know, how do those wheels turn? How are they powered from this fuel? Well, it turns out in very simplistic terms, we're going to go through this pretty quick, but you have in that engine this chamber with the piston, right, that goes up and down like this, and the piston's connected to a rod that it spins, and that turns, and that powers your car, powers the wheels. So when the piston goes up at, in the sequence of it going up and down, there's a little controlled explosion where the fuel in a gasoline car, it's the gasoline, comes in with a mixture of air, and then there's a little spark that ignites it, and there's a little explosion, and the explosion pushes the piston back down. So as the piston's going up and down, it's turning the wheels and it's powering the car. So what he's gonna change is this gasoline fuel that's coming in with air, he's gonna change that to hydrogen. That sounds like, you know, well, duh, yeah, that's a good idea, but what is it gonna take? So his plan is, well, first, I need an engine. So the first thing he does is he 
uh, works on getting one of these things. <clears throat> this is not the exact photo, I just found this photo. But that is a Briggs and Stratton's lawnmower, okay? And on the top there, there's an engine. Now, it's similar to a car engine. It's a little bit different. Instead of a, you know, a battery star, you got the pulse string you gotta do. <laughs> Some of us have to pull for a while. But he mowed lawns all summer long to earn this engine so that he could start. And so one of the things he knew was, okay, I've got to get the mixture, the mixture of the fuel and the air. Because remember with like fire, the fire has to breathe. Like you can put out a fire if you smother it because it needs that oxygen. So you have to have a mixture of oxygen of air with that fuel. And it turns out with like gasoline, they have what's called a carburetor. And one of the important things a carburetor does is it keeps the mixture of air with the fuel at the right amount. If you get too much air with the gasoline, it won't work. If you get too little air with the gasoline, it really won't work. So you gotta have the perfect, you gotta be right in there in that perfect amount. So he's gotta figure out what is the mix, because obviously it's gonna be different with hydrogen than gasoline. So how do you figure that out? So he's got this engine, he's gotta try getting hydrogen mixed. So he takes the carburetor off and he's gonna try doing his own carburetor, his own mixture. So he gets this glass flask that he is able to get from the science lab and it's got a crack and he repairs it because he's a glass blower. And that's the story in and of itself. But he gets this glass flask and what he's gonna do is he's gonna mix air and hydrogen in this container and he's gonna send it mixed to the engine. So he's basically making his carburetor this glass flask where he's mixing it and sending it. So that he gets ready and he's with his little brother and his little brother's helping him out. They're getting it set up. now. How do you start it? Of course, remember the pull string? So that's gonna be how we actually get this going and we're gonna see if it works. So they get ready and then he has a moment of inspiration and he puts his dad's old World War II bomber jacket around this big glass flask and then they pull that string. And when they pull the string, it tur the engine turns and then it does a half click back and it makes a little spark. The spark travels back the other way up that mix, that wonderful mix, ready to burn, and goes straight to that glass container. Boom! Probably more intense than that balloon. <laughs> and mom came running to the area they were, <clears throat> out behind the house, and now we're done <laughs> with hydrogen experiments, at least for now. Okay, so here's stop number one. And um, he goes on, and he does more science projects with other things. He wins science awards. A year later all still with this idea of we could run cars on hydrogen well he wins a science regional contest and one of the prizes for the winner is that they are going to pay for four hours of a professor of your choice of a professor's time where you will get to sit down and work with that professor with any questions of science on your project you want now, some kids might be like, mm. but if you're really into science and you have a goal and you want to know how to get there, that could be priceless. That could be the difference you need. Well, he's super excited. So he, he finds out and he chooses his professor. Oh, man, I'm going to ask all the questions. And so he can hardly sleep. Finally, the time comes and he sits down and he tells his professor what he wants to do. Maybe he didn't mention the glass exploding, <laughs> but tells this idea he has and the professor tells him oh you can't do that and he gets the book off his shelf one of those official books you know if it's in a professor's office it's official he gets it and he shows him right in the book where it says you can't and he gets another book and shows that and he pretty much walks away with yeah you can't do that so this is something we, we know in science that you can't do talk about a showstopper right so that, that kind of puts a damp on things for another year. And then he decides to try again. Now, why did he decide to try again? You'll have to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> but he decides to try again, so he goes back to that mower. And, you know, if you look at this mower, you've got this engine. Again, this is just a photo I found. But this, this lawn mower, and he's got to do experiments with this mower and see how he can make it, tweak it to make it work. So he hooks it back up, and this time he's looking again at that air mixture, and he ends up connecting a pipe 
where the carburetor was that's open to the air. And he connects his hydrogen tube that will send the hydrogen. He connects it, makes a hole in the pipe, on the side of the pipe, right before it goes into the engine. And so the hydrogen will be injected there. So he can control the mix by turning the hydrogen up and down, and then the engine's pulling that into itself, okay? But there's a problem. Because can you think about this? Okay, so I'm gonna try running the engine. Here we go. But every time you wanna run it, you gotta grab that string and go high quality sound effects here. But right? And then if, if you've ever mowed along with an old mower, you know what it's like. And you gotta get it going. He finally gets it going, and then you've got like a few seconds before it pop, bang, boom, boom, sounds terrible, and it kills out. And then he tries something else. Pulls it a few times again, starts going, pop, boom, bang, and it goes out. And it's so frustrating because in science, you need data, but to get data, he has to make a tweak and pull that string every time. It's like a, this ongoing process of very slow data. And this is probably one of the big breakthrough moments, you could say, in this invention because he had this idea, if I could just remove this pull string, so he takes the engine off the mower, he mounts it to a board, and then he connects an, an electric motor in place of that pull string. So instead of doing this every time, he can just flip a switch and the motor will start turning it for him. And then he can just work with it. So he gets it ready, he fires it up, and it starts spinning because the motor's spinning it. Now he can start sending the hydrogen and it starts pop, bang, boom, 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 pop. But it doesn't stop because the motor says, no, you're still going. And so the motor's spinning and he keeps tweaking it. He keeps, turn it up, turn it down. What is the right mix? Is there something else that's wrong? It sounds terrible. No one's gonna want a car that does this. And then all of a sudden, it just stops. Like it doesn't stop spinning because the motor's spinning it. It stops popping, stops banging. And it sounds like it's just, it's running. And so he goes, moment of truth, he's gonna turn the electric motor off. He turns the electric motor off so the motor stops and the engine keeps spinning. And he realizes it's running on hydrogen right now. And then he takes, he takes the control of how much hydrogen, and as he turns up the hydrogen, it revs up. And as he turns it up, and he goes way like, and he can control just by the level of hydrogen. And all of a sudden, he has a working engine. And so this turns into, obviously, that's an exciting moment. It's like big breakthrough moment, but his sights, remember, they're on the car. Not we're gonna mow our lawns with hydrogen, um, it's the car. So he's ready at dinner time, and he's like, Dad, I have some good news. My mower engine worked. It is running on hydrogen. So, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> he's like, you know, 15, 16 years old. Um, you have that new Chevrolet car, and I was just thinking, you know, what a good choice it would be to be the first hydrogen car in the world. And his dad's like, yeah, that's not happening. Actually, his dad's like, don't you touch that car. It's like, <clears throat> so um, next day at school, he didn't give up. He just went to a friend, and he was like, hey, you know that Volkswagen you have? Could be famous. Think about bragging rights in high school. No, he didn't. I'm making that up. But he tells his friend, we could use your Volkswagen. His friend's like, yeah, I don't think so. So he takes his friend, okay, come with me. He takes him to the science lab. Look at my engine. And he shows him. And his friend like, gets convinced. So they get the Volkswagen that night. They roll it to the back of the science lab. And he starts tearing off the carburetor. And his dad finds out and comes around the corner and says, what are you doing? We are doing science. <laughs> like... <clears throat> And he says, if you're going to ruin anybody's car, it's going to be ours. Such belief. <laughs> like, and he's like, really? The Chevrolet? No, not the Chevrolet. The Model A. <laughs> now, you have to remember, the Model A came out in 1927, so it wasn't exactly spanking new. Okay? <laughs> the Model A. So he got the Model A, and he took the carburetor off. And that night, he had the Model A running on hydrogen. And just like that mower where you could turn up the hydrogen, that's how the rudimentary setup he had, running, working. He had his little brother sitting in the back of the, so the Model A has a bed, a truck bed. So that's where he had the tank of hydrogen 
with his little brother and his little brother basically was the gas pedal so if he wanted to go you know have more power while he was driving he'd have to reach his hand out and go like this his little brother would turn up get some power going and then he that's he would able to throw because the amount of hydrogen it turned out for the mixture of air was so big it would work at a very small amount of hydrogen and a lot of air or a lot of hydrogen and not as much air it was way bigger it turns out than gasoline or any other fuel so he was able to drive around town with hydrogen power and a little bit of brother control in the back and this first hydrogen car is driving around in the 60s and you look at it what it is today so as i said if you get told by the leading authorities you can't do it hang on to your dream because if it's worth it you can find another way thank you